It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So let's talk about non-negotiable housing rules. The number one that we have is when it comes to buying a house, a primary residence, it needs to be at least a five-year decision. Uh, you just showed, Brian, you bought a house in 2003. It ran up until 2006. By 2010, the price had been decimated. But you were okay because you were in that house for long enough to be able to ride through that market volatility. These people now that are buying homes saying, okay, well, I'm just going to buy it right now, and next year it'll be worth more, and I'll sell it, and I'll be okay. That may not be the case. You need to make sure before you buy a home that your life circumstance substantiates, you can be in that home for no less than five years. Yeah, a big part of this is just understanding the market in general. You know, you guys, anybody who watches our content knows we talk about when we have volatility of any type of market, especially the financial markets, we count on like with the stock market, a V-shaped recovery, meaning that as markets go down rapidly, they're always a forward-looking indicator. The recoil or the rubber band effect can be just generate just as much energy up as the way down. So that's what's called a V-shaped recovery. A lot of people don't realize real estate markets, because it is illiquid, you know, it's not something that you can turn to cash very easy. It's that, that seems very contrary to where we are right now, where you could put your house on the market and get 10 offers. It's not always like that. A lot of times housing, the market will dry up on you and you'll see what's called a U-shaped mm -hmm. recovery, meaning the market can go down stay down, or we might even enter a period because we've been in this high period of inflation. Maybe home prices just don't go up anymore right. for a period of time because they're catching up with all the inflation we had. The key point is, is that you might just experience where a market just sits flat for an extended period of time. And we saw this actual thing happen back in 2007, 2008. If you watch where home prices started to slip and decline, it actually took about six years for home prices to get back to their pre-Great Recession levels. You compare that to the stock market, the S&P 500 overlaid, and you can in fact see that it was a V-shaped recovery, that the market got back to its pre-recession levels much, much more quickly than the housing market. So this is why you have to make sure you, when you make the housing decision, you can be in there for at least five to seven years. And this is so much more important for those who don't put at least 20% down on the house. If you are a first time home buyer and you're only doing the three, three and a half, five percent 5% down, you want to make sure you give yourself enough time in case you happen to be buying at a bad spot in the market. The other thing I think people don't recognize, you know, when we're talking about financial markets versus real estate markets, a financial market, we've been blessed with technology that everything's so much cheaper. Yep. You can now buy into stocks, mm -hmm. index funds, ETFs, and it's basically free. The cost of the transaction is very minimal to to the result you're trying to get. That's just that's not the cost that's that's there anymore. Housing's not that way. There's still a lot of hands in the transaction. It's not uncommon that if you actually added up all of the housing costs that you could be spending, it could cost you up to 10% of the sales price in all the fees it takes to make that, that transaction happen. Yeah, just to give you an idea, here are some of the costs included with real estate transaction. There's repairs and staging to get your house ready to sell. There's the agent commissions on both sides, the buyer's agent and seller's agent. There are concessions. In order to make the deal, you might have to walk away from stuff or you might actually have to cut your price down. Closing costs are a factor that have to be taken in. Capital gains, especially in this market, if you're a single individual who's made more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, or a married individual, or a married couple making more than half a million on a house, are going to be capital gains transactions. And there's moving costs. You're going to incur some costs to move from one place to the other. So you want to make sure that you factor this in, and you want to make sure that you're in a house long enough that you can recoup some of those costs. Even if you bought a house today and you sold it tomorrow, you'd have to sell it tomorrow for at least more than your closing costs and all these additional transaction costs just to break even. The more time you can give yourself, the more those costs will evaporate or disappear over time in the total price of the house. Yeah, and I think time is the great moderator of all this because it's not uncommon when we have sharp price or sharp 
you know, price increases or decreases, that the way that that kind of normalizes that is the more time you can be in an area, the more you can absorb and have the flexibility for that decision not to hurt you. So, so really pay attention to that non-negotiable number one. You got to be in this place at least five years mm-hmm. for it to even be a consideration.